Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, November 30th, 2018. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay and Catawiki auction results and take a look ahead and see what's coming up. There were some nice things that closed last week, and there were some good things that are coming up. So uh, uh, stay tuned. You'll see them. We'll have them up in the newsletter later. And uh, next week, we'll get a video out on the uh, uh, Hong Kong auction results at Christie's and Sotheby's. Most of the focus was on Christie's because they seem to have the most uh, of the higher-end things. And they had some tough sledding. And um, it's, it's a continuation of that pattern that we've seen coming along where fresh things into the market from old collections do pretty well, and things that have been around and in and out of the market in the last 10 years, 15 years, a few times, uh, getting tougher and tougher to get off the ground, okay? Uh, churning and burning in the market is, is coming back to haunt some collectors, I think. All right, and uh, now on to uh, what happened. This was a, a, a nice, uh, about a foot tall uh, Femi Ver planter that someone out there, the seller had gotten a hold of me, said, I'm putting it up. If you could put it in the newsletter, please do. And I looked at it, and I said, I like, I like, I like utilitarian uh, Chinese porcelains. And this was a nice planter, and it was about, about a foot by a foot in, in height and width. A uh, nice-looking thing, had a, a lot of interesting landscapes on it with figures on and it and so forth. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,563, okay? But it was a good-looking pot. But for well, not a terribly big one, that was a pretty good price. All right, it was a nice example. And then there was this, this uh, 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 15th, early 16th century uh, uh, Celadon Ming uh, 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 food, a food ceremonial food pot. They use them as incense burners. Uh, they call them incense burners. And uh, here's the uh, bottom of it. Very typical of these. It had a line here, as you can see. But boy, it went for a very reasonable price. If you're a Celadon buyer and you didn't buy this, you, you, you might wish you had. $304 for that. That was a very good buy. That was a nice purchase, even with the old hairline. And I think that line was very old. I think it's probably very stable. All right, nothing to worry about. And then on to this was that nice big, uh, roughly two foot tall uh, vase that uh, Josh Chamberlain had up in beautiful uh, peacock scenes and uh, continuous landscapes with birds and flowers and these great big blue handles. And um, it did pretty well, even though it had a few minor condition issues, but not much. About $1,150. It had been drilled. And uh, I think it had a couple of glaze crackles in it and so forth. But very pretty vase. Very, very pretty. And he also had this. This was a nice pair of roughly 10-inch tall Ming um, uh, figures uh, on lotus bases. These are very uh, similar stylistically. They originated sort of in those Tang bronzes. You may recall we did, we did a thing uh, with Sotheby's. So they had some of these. And I think Christie's had one of them from the Tang dynasty. And this is the form. Uh, very nice. These, were, of course, are much smaller. The Tang ones tend to be 30, 40, 50 inches tall even. All right, but these did pretty well. They brought $3,227, all right? But a nice looking pair of bronzes. I mean, pairs of bronzes are tough to come by. And then there was this Femi June with the green ground and dragons and these elephant uh, handles on the side, these nice big jars with wooden lids that uh, Josh had up. Um, he had these listed as 19th century. Uh, I think they're probably later 19th century, but they were very nice. And uh, they did fine. They brought $1,176. Josh was having a sort of an end of the year. I think he was just clearing off some racks, and he had some things that came in, so he decided to sell them. And also this, this uh, Chin Lung period uh, export platter with this uh, sort of honeycomb uh, uh, cavetto running around with Famille Rose, this nice figures. I think this, this plate was a little overlit. Um, it looked awfully bright to me uh, but because the decorations up close are quite good on this. And I think somebody got a rather nice buy. It went for $460. All right. And now moseying over here. This was a, just a good straight-up 16th century Jai Jing blue and white Ming bowl. I like this. These old provincial bowls are always interesting to me. And I, I, I thought this was pretty nice. They, the, the seller put up some good detail shots, too. At any rate, it went very reasonably. $202. It was about a 7-inch bowl. Uh, and that was not a bad buy. If you like old blue and white Ming... Now's a good time to buy it because it's become decidedly soft. And uh, then you have this big rouleau uh, vase done in the, sort of the Kangxi style with these panels of deer. I showed this last week. This was a 19th century vase, obviously, but uh, very nicely done. Just nicely done. Very pretty. Well, very attractive. Love the horses on it, of course. And uh, the deer, okay, the spotted deer staring off and so forth. 
And uh, this did pretty well. About $1,719 with a few condition issues, including a, uh, a drilled base, as I recall. All right. And then on to this. This was one of the neat buys of the week. I like this a lot. And I hope everybody looked at this carefully. This was a bronze lantern. In the photo, it looks like it's carved wood, which is still pretty good. I thought that was good. But this is actually all bronze. This was all bronze. And it had a lot of condition issues, as you can you tell if you stop to look at it for a minute. All the little glass, these late 19th century glass panels were broken on it. Um, the, the, there was something missing, or maybe a piece missing off the top. This panel was busted to pieces and so on and so forth. Hit everything but the lottery. But cleaned up, restored, and illuminated, this would be a great thing in your house. All right, it was about a foot tall and a foot wide. Nice size, just a terrific thing. And I love the fact that it had the floating immortals still, uh, still on it all the way around. But clean this up, and what a great thing. And I think somebody got a very good buy on this. It only went for $400. All right. It was being sold by Digger Studio out in Drake at Mass. He's a local guy. He gets good things. I'm going to double check the size on this. Yeah, 31 by 31. A little over 12 inches, or roughly 12 inches uh, high and wide. Okay, that was a great buy. I love that. All right. Things like this are great to have in your house. And then on to this, the elephant-handled um, uh, pear-shaped vase with these uh, soft enamels, and there was some script on the back of it. Nice example. Nice old vase, not not really terribly old, late 19th, early 20th century, but a good example. And it went for $1,225, all right? That was a good purchase. And then on to this, this um, Yongshen uh, uh, period armorial dish. Uh, nice pattern on it. The, the pattern is it was listed with it, but very finely done um, Famille Rose enamels. Uh, nice color. This red was good and strong. And you have the figure in the boat. And, of course, you have the uh, uh, couple of little nicks up here, but here's the, uh, the archer's hand and so forth, which is, is the, is the, is the, uh, uh, the Cudden armorial uh, uh, crest. And uh, it ended up going for $299, right? Armorial stuff right now is a pretty good buy. And then on to this. This was Woolworths down in Rhode Island had this. They get a lot of interesting estates. And this was a nice uh, latter, latter part, mid to later part of the 19th century Chinese export painting of a figure of a woman, uh, sort of a commoner, uh, sitting next to a table. And uh, you can see it was well painted because the, the, the table is, is trimmed with the, uh, the Buddha symbols. And here's the endless knot right there on it. And uh, these paintings are always done on really, really, th if you look at the backs of these, you'll see they're always done on very, very, very thin, almost like paper-thin linen canvas, all right? And on this, you can see how uh, the, the, the woman's uh, outline you know, goes right through the canvas onto the back. Um, I was amazed that any of these survived. But these are paper-thin canvases, not like European canvases, um, where everything was, you know, good, strong background. This is, these were very delicate, and they often rip. That's why you often see these little bits of medical tape on the back. People used to fix them that way. I, I don't think it's a great idea, but that's what they did. All righty, and uh, here you can uh, see the detail that was done here in the bamboo on her in the sleeves on her robe and so forth, okay? And uh, it went for $3,539. These paintings have become increasingly popular among collectors. All right, and then on to this, this Chinlung European uh, market export. Uh, probably, this is probably a bowl for a teapot. But this is a wonderful little European scene. And one of the things I liked was if you look over here, there's a chimney sweep coming up out of the chimney in, in the area where they did this, some grisaille decoration. And whenever you have these, these European genre scenes, always check the backgrounds. Check around to look for interesting things that the Chinese painter might have thrown in for fun. All right. Or this might have been taken from an engraving. And the Chinese artist himself didn't know why there was a person coming out of that chimney. But at any rate, um, uh, this was a nicely done plate. And it did pretty well. It brought $403, $408.88. All right, and then back to this. This was that very unusual, very nice 19th century Macau Chinese export uh, gouache or watercolor frame with the mother of pearl carved sticks. Beautifully done, nice, fairly unusual, and I, I thought it would do pretty well, and it did in the end, did just fine. Ended up selling for $2,840, not bad at all. But that was a nice fan and a, a rather unusual one. All right, and then over here to uh, Josh Chamberlain. This was a Femi Ver charger he had. This had the Yamanaka label on the back. It was originally retailed by Yamanaka. It had a repair to it, 
but still, the composition of this uh, Femi Ver decoration is just really superb. The, uh, this, the way this was done, the, the, the spacing and everything, really finely painted. Some Kang Shi Femi Ver is not this well done. This was a superbly well done example, and it did quite well. It brought $1,335, even though it had been broken. All right, and it was, I think largely due to the quality of the brushwork. All right. And then on to this, the uh, gravy boat in early 19th century with bats and fruit for good fortune. Uh, very European silver form, very much done in the European shape, but a very Chinese market decoration, which made it sort of interesting. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. There it is, okay. Picture of the interior. Nice decoration. And it did pretty well. It brought $1,136. Very nice. And then on to Katawiki. Here we are. This was one of the bargains of the uh, of the of the week. Nice looking group of Ming jarlets, and they all, all four of them went only for fifty seven dollars. That was a break, really good buy, uh, for, particularly for this particular one and this one. These were quite nice with the fish scale patterns on it, and uh, fifty seven dollars. How can you beat that? All right. And then on to this was that nice Qinlung period bowl. Um, this could have been a little earlier than seventeen eighty. The decoration on it looked awfully good to me. But this is a beautiful little bowl, and, uh, it, and it had, a, uh, I think, a hairline in it. And despite that, because of the quality of the thing, um, it ended up bringing $176 for this little cup. It's like a wine cup or a tea cup. And then on to this, the bronze. This is the, the seller had this bronze listed as 19th or 20th century, and I just couldn't see it as that. I, to me, it looked like an 18th century uh, bronze or maybe even a little earlier. Nice-looking example. And uh, here's a side shot of it. Good surface on it. And it ended up selling for $826. So I, I got a feeling that a few people out there thought it might have been older than, than the seller thought. Um, I suspect. That's what it looks like to me. And then this Kangxi double-handled piece with the uh, brown dressing on the edge of the rim of the lid and then around the, the top. Had a little loss here. Maybe some fritting up in there. But a nice-looking pot. And these uh, uh, precious symbols running around the bottom, the Buddhist precious symbols. And it only went for $307. I think that was a good buy for a decent piece of Kong Shi. Really do, okay? And then we're going to hop over and take a look at what's coming up this week. These are on eBay this week, a nice pair. These are about uh, 16 centimeters, so about six, seven inches tall. Late Yuan, early Ming uh, bronzes. Beautifully done. See how they do? They should do just fine. They're up to $10. They, they've got a few days to go, though obviously. Uh, they close on Sunday, so check them out. Could be a good buy. And then on to this, this uh, nice Ming uh, Wanli uh, plate with a bird in the center. The problem with this is that the seller radically appears to have over-sharpened the image. So when they over-sharpen the images on these uh, pictures, they end up looking almost like they're new or there's something wrong with them. All right. If you have Photoshop on your computer, do not use auto sharpen ever on your photographs, especially of objects. It ruins them, okay? And if, you, if you have good light and take your pictures, leave the sharpening tools alone. They do nothing but distract people. All right, at any rate, this is up to uh, uh, $255. It has a reserve on it. It should do well. Um, but uh, don't let the sharpened uh, pictures bother you. The color on that plate probably is pretty good. And then this is, uh, Scrap Dixon has these up. He's got a bunch of decent Ming plates up, and they close in a couple of days. This one's up to $17. It ends on Sunday. I expect to see it jump up. And then there's this Rondell decorated uh, uh, late Qing robe. This is a nice robe. Um, as you can see, uh, this, the sleeves might have been shortened at some point here, okay? But this is a good robe, uh, and these always do well. Uh, one of these just sold uh, not long ago at Christie's. I think it brought a, a twelve or fourteen thousand uh, dollars. This one's up to seventy-seven hundred. Ends on Monday, so we'll see how that does. Okay, and then this is also something else. Scrap Dixon has up. This is a really nice-looking um, Kung Shi uh, Femi Ver uh, plate with its uh, underglazed blue uh, central field, but wonderful coloration. The coloration on this plate is really quite lovely. There is a little bit of fritting here on the brown dressing on the rim. But um, a very attractive plate. Here's a picture of the center of it. Again, this sort of penciled floral decoration. We'll see how that does. All right. And then over on uh, Katawiki, you have this nice double gourd kung shi uh, iron red enamel, under, gray, under, gray, under glazed red enamel 
uh, double gourd vase. And then this, this is, looks to be like a Kangxi period uh, turquoise ground vase that has been lamped, obviously, um, but beautifully shaped. The shape of this thing is beautiful, and I, th I suspect it's been cut down a little up here. But if you want a really great lamp for yourself, boy, this is one of them, okay? This is a fabulously well-done piece of porcelain, okay? With nice mounts, ready to go. All right, you can see how they, crack, they put a few hairlines in it when they fix the top. But this has been cut down, which is fine. Keep it as a, keep it as a lamp. Have a great-looking lamp, all right? Nothing wrong with that. All right, and it's up to, you know, it's up to uh, uh, $2, okay? So uh, that's on Cataway. You might want to look into that. What's the size of this thing? I like this. Okay, total height, 53 centimeters. So it's uh, 53, 50, 20, about two feet tall. Very nice. All right, and then there's also this uh, silver-mounted uh, uh, Yongshen blue and white uh, plate. Uh, swing basket. They did a lot of these in Europe. This was a, is a nice one. It's only up to three dollars. Then you have this Kang, 19th century, but it's marked Kangxi blue and white bowl, done very much in the Kangxi style. And this, there's a, several of these. These Yongchen uh, Chinese Amari plates. This one's an excellent shape. It's beautifully painted, and we'll see how that does. Okay. And as I mentioned, we're, that's that's it for the week. Um, I'm running really late today. Uh, uh, I will get a video together, though. I want to go through that uh, those sales in Hong Kong. They were really sort of interesting how it went. And some of the pieces did very, very well. Uh, uh, and we'll, and we'll, get, we'll talk about those, okay? And uh, if, you, if, you, if, you've been, if you like the videos, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet here at YouTube or subscribe to us over for the newsletter at bitamount.com, please come over. It's all free. Uh, join in on the forum. There's some interesting discussions over there this week. And uh, uh, I'll see you all next week, and uh, thanks for visiting. And uh, uh, good luck out there. I hope you find something you like. All right. Bye-bye.